Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started using Billboard Generator. Um, so basically, I have this low poly tree over here, and I would like to generate a directional billboard for it. This is very easy thanks to Billboard Generator. Now I simply go to Tools, Billboard Generator, Generator Window, and I'm going to dock it to the right of my screen. Uh, now that I have the window, I have my model over here, which is just a mesh renderer and a mesh filter, and this very simple material. And I'm going to go back to the billboard generator window and drag the tree. And you'll see that a list item has been added. Now click on it. it you'll see that it asks for something called a generator settings asset. So a generator settings asset is what basically dictates the parameters the generator will use while it's capturing the billboard images, okay? So let's create one. I'm I have a, a folder over here called billboards. I'm going to right click, go to create billboard generator and select billboard generator settings asset. I'm going to give it a simple name like generator settings. <coughs> Excuse me. And now I'm going to drag the settings asset and drop it on this window. You'll see that two new buttons and a fold out has shown up. So let's expand that settings fold out and you will see a bunch of parameters, okay? So the first thing is the directions slider, which is basically how many directions the billboard will be rendered from. So I'm going to, for this example, have like 36 directions. <coughs> Excuse me. And now we have the this warning here that says the maximum supported texture size is uh, 16 1384 which is just depends on the system it doesn't have anything to do with billboard generator itself um, now we have the texture width and texture height texture height which are basically the width and height of each frame that's going to be rendered by the generator okay so now i'm just going to choose 512 and 512 for this uh, tutorial and the the use main camera toggle basically whether you would like to use the main camera in your scene or like create a copy of it and use that to render the billboard or create a new camera using the parameters over here. Um, for this tutorial, I'm going to use the main camera because it's easier. The other parameters give you like an advantage of having to not having to maintain a camera in your scene. But since this is just a simple getting started video, I'm going to use the main camera. So I'm going to toggle it. And as you can see, all the other options like the clear flags and the image color and stuff like this, sorry, and background color have been disabled and will be grabbed from the main camera. And we have a, um, an, a pop up here that says the free rect choice heuristic, which is basically when packing the resulting uh, billboard atlas. What, uh, what rule to use or what choice uh, function to use? I always recommend that you use the bottom left rule because it re returns the best result. But the other uh, values depend on the situation. For example, the short side fit will basically make a very horizontal, a very long horizontal image. The long side fit is going to make a very long vertical image. The best area fit is going to pick where each uh, frame fits perfectly. But sometimes it might not result in the most efficient packing. The bottom left rule starts from the bottom left corner of the image and puts the sprite like in a Tetris game. This is the best way to do it. And the rect contact point rule. So basically it searches for each uh, point that has contact between this frame and the next frame and basically puts, puts them together depending on that. So uh, anyways, we're going to use the bottom left rule. And we have two fields over here, the initial bin width and initial bin height. The, these basically dictate what the virtual texture packing bin size is going to be. I always recommend setting this as high as you can. This doesn't affect performance at all. It just makes packing faster and easier. If you leave it at zero, the generator will try and automatically calculate the size that it needs. But sometimes due to like trimming and um, like visual artifacts, it might not be pixel perfect, but uh, it, the result is going to be trimmed anyways to the uh, like the, the best size. Okay, but here we're just going to set it to 16,384. 
and 16,384. Uh, and we have another toggle down here called isolate target. So basically, would you like to take this uh, model or take this game object and move it to a temporary scene? All this is done in the background, of course, and render it while it's there, or you'd like to render it in its environment. Um, this checkbox is useful if you'd like to isolate certain like pieces of an environment and render it. But otherwise, I just recommend you have an empty scene and do the rendering inside of it. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to leave it off. Now, we have two buttons, one called Generate Billboard and another called Capture Texture. The Generate Billboard button is pretty self-explanatory. It just takes the parameters that you supplied above and generates the billboard. It will generate two files, a billboard texture and the, uh, and the billboard atlas asset, okay, uh, which are going to be used to render billboards. And then we have the, <coughs> excuse me, the Capture Texture um, button. This basically captures a single shot using the parameters above uh, or the arguments above from the object you have here. So this could be useful for like generating item uh, icons or environment icons or level icons, stuff like this. Okay. Uh, so now that we have set up our generator settings and our uh, generator window stuff, let's go to our main camera. Since we use the main camera in this tutorial, let's go to the inspector. You can see that I have done some special setup here. It's not really uh, like this isn't the only way to do it. You can configure this however you like, but so, but in this case, we're going to generate this model from orthographic perspective, and I'm going to hide the skybox because I really don't need to have this blue and gray thing in the background. So I'm going to set it to a solid color, and I'm going to go to the solid color and make sure that the alpha is set to zero. Otherwise, when you try and make the resulting atlas of the object's billboard transparent it will be instead uh, solid white so I'm gonna make it uh, set its alpha to zero okay now for the culling mask you you can set this to whatever you like but I do usually leave it to everything in case um, you would like to have some effects that only show in a specific layer or would like to render an object that is on a specific layer okay and the projection, as I said, you can set it to perspective or whatever you like, but in this case, I'm going to set it to orthographic. And the size, as you can see, this is just to fit the object inside the camera perspective correctly. And the clipping planes, I'm going to set this to zero, or you can, again, set it to whatever you like. And the clipping planes is 100, okay? Now, after I've done all this, I'm going to go back to the generator window and click on generate billboard. It's going to take like a couple of seconds and it will generate a billboard and and billboard atlas asset. So I'm going to name this uh, file my tree billboard. Okay, and as you can see, it generated two files over here. First, as you can see, the file that has uh, generated, let's change some parameters over here real quick. Okay, let's open it in an image viewer, and as you can see, it generated the object from multiple different directions. And now, let's go and change this to from repeat to climb, do the wrap mode. And now that we have our texture, let's go into the billboards folder again, and right click create material. Okay, we're going to name this material my tree billboard material. Okay. Uh, usually you can use any shader it doesn't really matter you can use um, like standard legacy mobile or anything but for billboards I highly suggest that you just use the unlit transparent shader because it's simply an imposter that doesn't like need lightning or anything uh, but needs to be affected by things like fog and um, culling and stuff like this so I highly, highly recommend that you set it to unlit transparent okay once you do this, drag the texture that we have onto the field over here, and you will see that uh, it has been applied and it has transparency. And now for the fun part, let's go to our scene and remove our model. Okay. And let's go to our camera, change its perspective to 
uh, sorry, it's projection to perspective. Change the window size, okay. I'm gonna set the clear flex to skybox now again. And I'm going to go ahead and right click, create an empty object and call it my tree billboard. Okay, I'm gonna reset its position. And now I'm going to go here and add component and I'm gonna call this component directional billboard renderer, okay? You have multiple billboard renderer choices. You have, let's go here and show you. You have the directional renderer, the index renderer and the sample renderer. Each of these renderers cover different use cases, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're just gonna stick with the directional billboard or the basically the conventional billboard that everyone knows and sees in video games, okay? So once you've added it, you have a uh, target field over here, which is basically what the billboard should rotate or change its texture to face. So in this case, I would like it to face my main camera and you usually set this to, your, uh, to either your main camera or to your player object. Now that I have this, uh, there is two checkboxes down here, one called use billboard target and one called use alternative workflow. The use billboard target, uh, instead of using the transform target above, there is a component called billboard target that you can assign a transform to it uh, and you can access it statically. Okay, so if this is true, it will use this target transform field over here. If it's false, it's going to use the target field up here. Okay. So in this case, I'm just going to use the normal target field. And the alternative workflow is basically, do you like, do you want to use mesh filters and mesh renderers to render the billboard, or would you like to use just uh, like this normal thing without any mesh renderers or mesh filters? If you check it, two new fields will, three new fields will pop up: the mesh field, mesh filter field, and the mesh renderer field. Um, basically, you'll need to add these two components and add your material to the mesh renderer. Uh, so this just gives you um, like the ability to use it with the lot system. And I already have a tutorial on this, so I will link it in the description. So, and in this tutorial, I'm going to leave the alternative workflow checkbox off. Okay. Now to the material field, uh, as you can see, um, we have already created a material down here. So I'm going to drag and drop it here and the atlas field which basically asks you wh which atlas or which billboard atlas to use for the texture lookup and um, uh, UV mapping and stuff like this. So I'm going to drag the atlas I have down here to this field. So th these two fields down here uh, give you like the ability to selectively render and update billboards. Usually you set them to both of them, you set both of them to true, sorry. And um, if you like to use a patching component like the included billboard render patcher, you disable them because uh, the patcher will do it manually, okay? So let's remove this now for now. I'm gonna set them both to true. Now I have done this, you can preview the billboard if you go into the scene view, as you can see it's down here, but the scale isn't right. So how do we fix this? Go to your uh, billboard, Okay, over here, let's first lock the inspector here and go to my tree billboard. I'm going to show its properties and I'm going to increase the scale. So as you can see, this scale is independent of the object scale, but it's still affected by it. And uh, when you use the, what's it called, the alternative workflow mode, okay? But when using the other mode, you simply just rely on the renderer scale, okay? And this is uniform across all uh, billboards that use it. So I'm going to increase this to like, let's first revert to the default. And I'm going to increase the defaults to like 10 times and 10 times. I'm going to go and increase the width a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think this is almost right. So now I have set my scale to the correct values. I'm going to close this, select my tree. I'm going to move it to the back a little bit. And now I'm going to unlock the inspector and I'm going to play or enter play mode. Once you enter play mode, you'll see that the object is rendering. Okay. And when I move the camera around, it will rotate to the correct angle. As you can see. 
And also, by the way, billboards update selectively, so if the camera or their target didn't move, they won't update, so they save on performance. And patching is also supported, so if you go into the stats window, you will see that there are three patches. Let me exit play mode and go to edit project settings. Go to a player, go all the way down, enable dynamic patching, okay? And I'm going to close the project settings window and I'm going to duplicate my billboard multiple times. And if I run my game now, you see that all the billboards are patched and they all update correctly. Let's see if I move the camera now. You'll see that they are following it and updating their angles accordingly. So I hope this video is useful. Thank you so much for watching and good luck using Billboard Generator.